And I'm back! Okay. Thank you for continuing with me. Um, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. Back to Romans 7.14. Um, it says, See, we all, we, we can all identify with the struggle Paul described. We long to do what is good and healthy and right, but we end up doing the same thing. The same old destructive things. As we take personal inventory, we admit our failures and seek to change. But then we fall right back into our destructive habits. We instead, we must use our failures to inspire new moral inventory and then get on with recovery once again. It is time, I'm sorry, in time our sins and failures will become fewer as God begins to transform us. So basically it's, you know, when you can come to realization that you are powerless over whatever it is that you're powerless over, um, you know, when you can understand that, you start realizing it's a mind thing, you know. There's another, like I said in my other video, there's another powerful source out there that's trying to control your mind. That's what he wants. And that's what we become a slave to. A slave to sin. Lord knows I don't want to do that no more. <laughs> mm. And then I'm going to go to John 8. John 8, 12. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Wrong one. Um, John 8, 31, 36. To be set free. To be set free is to know the, the truth. The truth about ourself and about Jesus, our liberator. The truth is this. We are a slave to sin and powerless to manage our life effectively. With God's truth as a standard for our moral inventory, we can recognize and confess our needs and struggles, our, our, our sins and addictions. As we confess these to God, to ourself, and to at least one other person, we share the truth about our life. When we turn our broken life over to God, who al alone can make us whole, we are again acknowledging the truth. These different applications of the truth can combine to set us free from sinful habits chemical dependencies, and emotional bondage. So you see, there is hope out there. You know, if you're a depressed person, you know, I struggle with depression. Um, I would isolate, lock myself in the room, sleep, I had no desire to do anything. Um, but, you know, that isolation doesn't come from God comes from the enemy. He wants to tear you down. He is here to kill, steal, and destroy your soul, your families, your life, and mine. But, amen, we got a powerful God. An almighty God who is stronger than him. And he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. And there's nothing good that lives in you unless you put the work and feed yourself with good. You know, like I was saying about being positive, feeding ourselves with positivity. Um, another scripture I have is Romans 12, 2. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I'm sorry. We're not going to go there just yet. 
I have something here. Romans seven eighteen is a is um is a verse that really stuck out to me. And it says, And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. You know, I'm gonna tell you um a quick story here. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. <laughs> you know what? Oh well. Um, whenever I was in rehab, I had I struggled. See, you know, being on the streets for as long, you know, and learning how your mindset is to survive. You're in survival mode. You know, a lot of the women, um, a lot of the women, sorry, you know, had things that I didn't, you know, it was about cigarettes, it was about candy, it was about coffee, <laughs> you know, those were like gold whenever I was in rehab because the place I was at you were not allowed to have any of those you know why you know I'm, they already took our drugs away why can't we have what we want right no there's a method to their madness that's something that kept sticking with me you know it was I want what I want when I want it and especially when other people have something and I don't have it I felt left out you know I was a, a new person here um, I already had my insecurities Lord knows you know we have them but you know the devil tries to make us embarrassed of our insecurities you know he feeds us lies but my God loves me no matter what I look like and you know and um so it's like so I, I, I go to this house and everybody you know is sneaking around doing that addictive behavior and it was like man you know, I'm trying to think of ways to, you know, um, you know, just using my addictive behavior, my mindset. What can I do for them to get what I want? You know, offer massages, you know, because I went to school for massage therapy. Um, you know, and I mean, it actually came to the point. Or I had to sneak out the window and get what I wanted. And that's horrible. Um, I don't know if I'm going to regret saying this. <laughs> oh, Lord. You can't do anything now, right? So, anyway. Um, and it came to a point that you know it was I was a slave to that I was in survival mode everybody else had it and I didn't have it so I wanted it so I didn't care about my consequence I went out there and did it anyway and I was struggling struggling not jumping out the windows other times why because I was a slave to that sin and when God started working in my life, were you kidding? I remember I was in um, our Sunday church group. And I, you know, I have to have, I told these women to, yo, keep an eye on me. I'm going to jump out this window. And <laughs> they would, bless their heart, you know. I mean, it's not like we all have our own problems and issues that we're going through here, but let alone you're going to keep an eye on me. 
You know, but I wasn't going to tell the workers anything. You know, why am I going to be honest? <laughs> but then God started moving because I was willing. I was, I was ready. What am I going to do? I'm like sitting here like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go out this window. I'm going to go. You know, like, what? That's not how I want to be. You know, that, that's. No, no. So I came, <laughs> I came clean. I came honest. And I remember I told my counselor what I did. I told the the top woman what I did. And her and I already had, well, I. I'm sorry. I, like. I had an issue with her before because this was, you know, I just, your mind can tell you so many excuses, you know, but bottom line is I just wasn't ready at the time because it was my second time at this place and um, the first time I made up excuses of why I didn't stay when truth be told I wasn't ready, you know, I still had to learn, you know. And I'm grateful that I did because it brought me to where I am at today. And the Lord is my best friend. And I have that house to thank. I have the step work to thank. And I think that's why God wants me to do this for you guys. You know, he, he wants to be your best friend. I was in a meeting today and I heard this woman share how God was her best friend. I was like, yes, he's mine too. You know, I wasn't jealous. Oh, he's your best friend. No, he's mine. No, no, no. And that's what he wants. He wants to be your best friend. But sometimes we don't know how. I didn't know how. But you know what? These steps help me. And if you do them, and you're honest, and you're open, and you're willing, be honest, open, and willing, and you do these steps, you know, maybe take my advice that God is blessing me with right now. Because I... If it was my decision to be like, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to make a video. You know? But, no, I love God. And I know how much He loves you. And He wants to reach you. So, I'm making this video for you. Whether it's depression. Whether it's anxiety. Whether, you know, it's sex, drugs, alcohol, food. You know, maybe you have a sugar addiction. Whatever the case may be. Men. You know, pornography. A sin, a sin, a sin, a sin, a sin. Stealing. You know, just whatever. You're powerless over it. And you're admitting your life has become unmanageable. So, Romans 12.2 says... Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. You know? Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. You know, it's don't, what I get from that is to, don't give up hope, be confident, be confident in our Lord. And this is more of a step two, so step two I'll have to stop this video anyway. I'm almost at 15 minutes. So we're just going to...